Look, guys, I'm gonna just put put it simply. This this dude can cook, man. Straight Absolutely. up. Appreciate that. Absolutely. There, 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 he can cook, man. Yeah. There, there we go. go. There we What's go. I know about that? There's the Cajun heat. That's it. That's yes. the stuff right there. Yeah. That is Cajun it right heat. there. And you know, and you use it on all your all your catering and cooking, right? That's right. Uh, you use, only use your seasoning. That's right. So it's award winning. It That's wins right. competition. So there you, go. you got any yeah. questions? I thoroughly enjoy watching people eat my food and loving my food and coming back for seconds. That's that's mm-hmm. more rewarding for me than than the money I make or the awards I win. Mm-hmm. Saying is they want. Here's where the controversy us. starts. <laughs> Should we ask him the famous question? Do tomatoes belong in gumbo? <laughs> You talk about making that's gravy, a thick, right healthy there. gravy. That's a pro that, that, tip that, right there. That, now why oh, man, it's, it's to die for. Shut your mouth. Are yes. you serious? Guess, like, guess what I'm tomorrow. getting this weekend? I like a sticky, sticky jambalaya. I like a moist, sticky yes. jambalaya. Like, yeah, me you too. Take that scoop. You got to shake it to get the rice off the, the, the <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's right. Y'all heard that? That's how you cook jambalaya. Listen yeah, to that yeah. Man right and the there. secret to that is don't use long grain rice. Use that long grain. You're gonna have to have your running shoes because you're gonna chase that rice all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you something: a happy feeling of somebody from Louisiana. The weight of a full propane tank <laughs> gives a certain amount of satisfaction to my soul that I cannot explain. I said, "Oh, that one's full. Oh, yeah. that's good." Yeah. Like, yeah. subscribe, yes. share, comment, do all of the above. Barbecue brand, what's going in the pot, going in your mutt. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hello and welcome to Stirring the Pod podcast, a podcast all about discussing controversial food subjects, historical aspects of food, and pretty much everything else food and cooking related. Once again, let me start by introducing my co-host. First up, we have Mr. Barbecue Brand, our resident pit master and a past guest on Food Network's Barbecue USA. Welcome, Barbecue Brand. What's cooking, everybody? Let's get this thing started. Next up, we have Mr. Brandon D., our food science nerd and southern food expert. Welcome, Brandon D. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Welcome for welcome and for listening in, and let's get this kicked off. I am KCP, your host and cookie queen. Tonight is a very special night. We have a special guest on the show. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Shane Gaspard. Hey, hey, hey. Thank y'all for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. How is everyone doing tonight? Excellent. Everybody's Excellent. good. Everybody's good. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. And y'all. good. It was uh t- today. I it was the first day I felt that heat. It felt hot today. You can tell oh, something yeah. right around the corner. It's coming. It's a warm. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I had some projects with some pots today, and um, restoring some some old cast iron pots. From my wife's grandfather's pot, and it was been in the weather. It was weather beaten, so I was outside restoring that cast iron pot. I had to go get a, a sweat band to put around my head. I had so much sweat coming off my head, going in my eyes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh, summer is, what... is, is quickly uh, approaching, unfortunately. Let me tell you, we're going to get into... We're going we gonna to get into your pots in a, in a little bit, but uh, mm. and after a while, I want you to tell us how you did that, too. I want, I want to go over that. that whole <laughs> right, yeah. Because a lot of people yeah. get a lot of pots, especially down here. You get, you get some pots handed down to you, and you don't know how to really restore them the right way. I, I would love mm-hmm. for you to go over that. I, I did a I did a Dutch oven that, that Dutch oven that we used for at uh, rodeo. I did that one. That thing took me like a couple of days to get it. It was it was mistreated. There was some food that was left on that was just oh, ca- burn burn on there. So the solution was a was a blowtorch, and I just I just turned everything to ash and then just wire wheeled all the rust off of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, else can you do? That's a job. Yeah, it's That's a job, sure. yeah. A lot of elbow grease. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, let's get this started. All right, Mr. Shane, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from originally? Well, I was born and raised in a small community called Lines Point, Louisiana, which is uh, south of Crowley. So it's, 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 
is basically Crowley. I went to Crowley High, grew up in the former the former community of, of Lions Point, which is like seven miles south of Crowley, ten miles north of Kaplan, right in the middle of nowhere. Oh, okay. you know, yeah. Grew up there working on the farm. You know, I lived with my dad. A lot of good memories out there on that farm for sure. You know, running. You know, hay. We had cows. We had horses, and you know, we had hay pastures and. Everything else you could think of on a farm. We didn't go to the store, but to buy bread sometime. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we raised all our own food from the chickens, the cows, to, to the hogs. Mm. Wow. Man. Yeah, I bet y'all had a big garden, too. Absolutely big. <laughs> <laughs> tractor big. <laughs> yeah. nice. Yes, tractor big. <laughs> For I, sure. I, I grew up in the country and. I, I, I do definitely miss that part of growing up, just making sure everything that you grew and you hunted or whatever is, is was part of, you know, your daily life, basically. Uh, I mean, we, we hashed our chickens and we, we you know, we, we put them in the cages and, 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 you know, and fed them and then butchered them and did the same thing with the hogs and, and, mm-hmm. and with our cattle. And we had a garden that, Lord have mercy, could, you know. I'm serious. We didn't go to the store for hardly nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, we had everything we needed. You could get lost yeah. in that garden, probably. What was what, what was some of the favorite things that your uh, your family grew that you learned to appreciate as a kid? Man, uh, you know, cucumbers is one thing. You know, and my daddy loved you know his 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 fig trees and his uh, his um, his orange trees, his satsumas, and his um and and and, and uh, what you call um persimmons he loved his persimmons oh. <laughs> you know so we had a little orchard that he he grew a lot of Excellent. a lot of fruits and vegetables on and then we had potatoes and we grow potatoes and man i pick so many potatoes out of the ground it's crazy yeah. <clears throat> we're talking not just five gallons probably 55 gallons at a that's time. hard that's hard work yeah 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 potatoes um, are very heavy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah, when I say tractor, like we get the spade on the tractor and just bust up the, the, the rows of the tractors with that spade and would just uncover all the potatoes and just went behind the tractor with five gallon buckets, start picking them up and throwing them in. Yeah, it was that was that was work. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, but, that's crazy. Man. Well, that's how it was. That's what you had to do to survive. Mm-hmm. Think that's about it. it. You you buy a ten pound bag of potatoes at the store. It's not a very big bag. So no, <laughs> no. <laughs> potatoes yeah. are heavy. That's I know. That's some hard work. Yeah, you know it's yes, it's yes. funny yep. because it's like we we so spoiled now to just going to the store and getting a lot of things that we need. But man, whenever you really grow your own stuff. You really appreciate yep. how much better quality it is. It just everything tastes better oh, yeah. when it comes out of your garden. I got a garden here at the house, and you know I grow tomatoes, I grow cucumbers, and and you know and peppers and everything else. And you know I, I can't wait to eat the cu- cucumber off the stalk. You know it's like it's it's so much better, fresher, crisper, uh, everything else. You know mm-hmm. under the sun from buying from the store. Absolutely. It's so much better. It tastes so much better. Oh, yep, hundred yeah. percent. And just the work and the sweat you put into it, and, and you know, the fruits of your labor, right? Yep. Yeah. You can appreciate yeah. it more. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I tried having a garden here in Houston, but uh, the squirrels decided to uh, take over mm-hmm. and frustrate me entirely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're a pain in the butt over here. Yeah, the ones here in Houston aren't the they're the gray squirrels, so they look like a little rat compared to the ones in Louisiana. Which, it's a little cat squirrel, yeah. Oh yeah. my god, I I still <clears throat> in disbelief every time we go to a barbecue brand's parents' house and we see these giant red squirrels. And you mean my parents' them. house? Or... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah. There's too many Brandons in here. Yeah, hey, my, mama, my yeah. mama missed y'all too. She was asking about y'all the other day. Yeah. Oh, how good. <laughs> she, she, she probably had those, those squirrels with the thunder thighs too over there. Yeah, oh, that's some big yeah. squirrels. The little fox squirrels. Yeah, yeah, they're big mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so let's talk about your cooking. So who is your the biggest influence for your cooking in your life? I learned a lot from my dad. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a he was a great cook and he, he did a lot of 
you know, gravies and gumbos and stuff. So I learned how to make gravies, traditional Cajun rice and gravy. You know, I learned it from him. Mm -hmm. um, how to brown your meat down and, and, you know, make that dark, that dark gravy. And then the other one was my Aunt Lou, my nanny Lou, what I call her. She's from Crowley. You know, she's like 87, 88 years old. And I believe I showed y'all her cookbook the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, right. I learned, yeah, I learned a lot from her too, right? You know, just... And my mom's a good cook too. So, but you know, I grew up with my dad mostly, and he was he was an excellent cook. Mm. And and then and then my well, my own nanny, you know, picked up here, picked up there. You learn something from somebody here, then you, mm. and you incorporate it to, 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 to what you like, you know. Um, just like any seasons, you know, you try to you incorporate away what you like. You right. know? Who is your dad's? Uh, uh, who taught your dad to cook? Did you learn it from his dad too, or is it mom? His mom. Mm -hmm. His mom did all the cooking, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, now we're talking. We're going way back. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, my, right. You know, my dad, he passed away seven, eight years ago. He'd be ninety. Nope. He'd be ninety right now if he'd still be here. So yeah, we talking a long time ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely yep. understand that. I'm one of I'm one of nine, and my uh, my mom was born in 1940. So. When you when you start talking about grandparents and great grandparents, we 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 getting yeah we get my dad was born in thirty two or something yeah man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. long time Ooh, yeah. but a lot of good memories and every time you went to his house you know he he was always cooking or he wanted to cook and make sure you was fed just just like the old Cajuns are you know no oh, yeah if you go to somebody's <laughs> house they want to feed you and you got to eat that's you know it. oh yeah and you Absolutely. offend them if you don't eat yeah <laughs> right, that's right right. Absolutely. Right. If you were hungry, that was your fault. Yep. <laughs> right. That was absolutely your fault. <laughs> so let, let me ask you a random question. What is your favorite memory as a kid growing up? Is which one to pick? You know, I'm an outdoorsman. So, you know, I love to hunt. You know, I love to fish. So, um, you know, Spending no time, you know, first dove hunt ever I hunted was with my dad, you know, mm -hmm. um, duck hunting, you know, with my cousin, uh, my aunt's son, you know, taking me on my first duck hunt. You know, some of those are, those are memories that stick with me for a long time. Yeah. You know, and I pass that on to my kids and everybody else, you know. Um, you know I've taken a lot of people, even adults, on their first duck hunts and dove hunts, so hmm. that's special to me. That's awesome. That's really cool. That y your family sounds a lot like my family. <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, like mine. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of fishing in my family too. So what? So what kind of fishing? Mostly, did you do a lot of saltwater, freshwater, both, or? I do both. Absolutely, yeah. do both. You know, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not prejudiced to either one, man. I I love them. Right. I love to you know catch the sockeye and bass. I, mm -hmm. I eat brim when they're running, and then uh, we have. My buddy has a camp down in LaRoe, South Tahoma, so we go down there a lot and we'll go fish, you know, catch specks oh. and reds and we'll go crabbing down in Point of Shane and all that stuff down there. Oh, nice, yeah. So, yeah, we do a lot of that. Oh, nice, so, nice. That's nice. great. Yeah. yeah we so what's, your, what's your fish in my freezer. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. What's your favorite uh, saltwater fish? Are you uh, for reds or specks? I prefer to eat the specks. <laughs> and I, I like, you know... <laughs> As far as the fight goes, you know, you want to, you know, you oh, want yeah. to go on those reds, you know. Yeah. But as absolutely. far as, you know, meal, the yeah, them specs are hard to beat. I expect, yeah, the specs, are, you know, the uh, the slot size on just just over, <coughs> just like, you know, I think I can't remember what it is in uh, Louisiana. I think it's 14 inches is the slot size for uh, specs. It was, it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was 12. They just moved it up. Yeah, the 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 ones between yeah. fourteen and I think like eighteen inches are are, are the best ones. You know, the, the, yeah. those are just awesome. I yeah. had one. I cooked one. I caught it was like a twenty four inch, and I tasted it. It was good, but it wasn't as good as the smaller ones. I was like, man, uh, same, same smaller thing ones with just. The red. Same oh thing yeah, with the reds. you know, oh, you yeah. got that slot between the sixteen to you know, you, you, those sixteen inch reds is, is my favorite. You know. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. Just legal to keep. You know, those are mm -hmm. those are the good ones to eat. That's some good fish tacos right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like, no, I, fish. I like to put them on, on the half shell on the pit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't oh, had yeah. that in a long time. Yeah. That's a great way to cook redfish. 
my daughter caught a redfish uh, the last, well, not the last vacation we went on, but one of the vacations we went on, she was the only person to catch one. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, threw that thing on the half <laughs> shell, put it on the pit. No, oh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's it. my thing, so. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You get some <laughs> garlic butter and, and seasoning, and, man, you just go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's some good yeah, stuff. That's... So what made you decide to start a catering business and your food truck business? Well, yeah, before that, what, what, did you, what did you do before you got into catering? Just to, kind of like a background on it, you know, mm-hmm. because, you know, people usually, a lot of people end up doing cooking, but they did something before and they just decide, you know, hey, it's something I want to do other than, you know, work a, you know, work on the job they are, they decide to get into cooking. Yeah. You know, well, I, you know, I had a, <clears throat> you know, my history, you know, I did a few different things. You know, I worked in the oil field, pipeline for a little while, but, and then I got in the glass business and I had a glass business for a long time, changing windshields, shower doors and stuff like that. And, and I would cook every now and then for people and people would ask me to start cooking. So I started cooking and gumbos and, um, and then <clears throat> when I sold my glass business, my franchise, when I sold it, I went into the sales world, construction equipment sales and rentals. And uh, so we used to go to golf tournaments and I, I was always one cooking or we had company functions. I was the one cooking. Uh, you know, they had LSU tailgating there with days calling me to go cook. Mm-hmm. You know, the company was getting me to cook everywhere. And everybody was calling to ask me, hey, can you come cook at this event? Hey, can you come cook at this event, Shane? Like, and it just started to where it's like, man, I just told my wife, I said, I just soon make this a business. I'm getting so many calls for it now. You know, it's like I just soon turn it into a little business. And you know, a year later, it's been a year, I, 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 you know, I started Gaspar's Cajun Catering, you know. So, you know, I made an LLC, got a license insured, approved by the Board of Health, and did all the work. So, I, you know, it was a lot of money invested in the upfront, you know, to get the little business mm-hmm. started. But um, mm-hmm. I wanted to do it the right way, you know, right. Right. cut my corners. Yeah. You know, I had to take that food safety health course, an eight-hour course, you know, to learn, make mm. sure you're prepping food right. And here I am today, a year later, and it's uh seems like I'm just about cooking almost every day now. Wow. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Wow. That's a, cooking is a good, if you're in the sales business, cooking is a good skill to have, man. That, that makes, a lot, of, <laughs> makes oh, a lot of people happy. You'd be, you'd be surprised how many hands I shake just cooking, you know. Right. Um, and, and golf golf tournaments, skeet shooting tournaments, or just job sites, big job sites that mm. customers are renting a lot of gear from us. You know, I'd go set up with a pot and go cook a jambalaya for, you know, 150, 200 people, you know, with corn mock shoe on the side. You know, there was, man, you wouldn't believe how many people were appreciated and the customers and the relationship you built because of food, right? Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because a lot of people were coming in from out of town on these bigger projects. So they, they're not used to having the jambalayas or red beans and rice or gumbos. Right. And so mm-hmm. man, it was a treat for those guys and those labor hands coming down. Mm-hmm. And you never knew, you know, that labor hand in a year from now, he might be the guy calling the shots. So uh, yeah, it was a lot true. of, yeah. So shaking hands and meeting people, food is always, yeah. been, you know, a feather in my hat. Yeah. People connect over food. They really do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Good food is this. Yeah. Good yeah, food look, connects people. Well, look how we met you. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Food always brings people together. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you know, y'all, y'all got mutual friends of mine with you know Rusty Noel. He's a good friend of mine. You know. Oh um, yeah, it's a small world. He's a he's oh, a yeah. great cook himself. He definitely, oh, definitely. is. So yeah, um, I mean, go, going back to um, your original question about how how you got into into cooking. When you started cooking, whenever you decided that you wanted to really kind of take this thing a little bit further, did, or did you expect how much response you would get from from people locally and just you know around the areas on on the jobs that you got, the 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 amount of cooks that you would have to do, uh, you know, week in and week out? Were you were you ready for that, or, or did it kind of just hit you and you had to <laughs> take hold of it? I, I want you know. I didn't really know what to expect when I did this. You know, I already, I already knew I was cooking quite often already, you know, enough to where my pot didn't leave my my carport. You know, I didn't, you know, yeah, I had that many, you know, events going on. Um, but now, like, I'm getting calls 
and emails and text messages almost every day for quotes, wow. you know, and doing stuff. And there's, and I'm turning people down because there's dates I've, I'm already booked for. I can't, I can't take any more, you know, wow. I got, uh, the, the po' boy festival just emailed me earlier for in Scott, they're going to have the po' boy festival in Scott at, um, off of Apollo road over there, uh, West village, the new, the new subdivision. They look and they want me to come and set my trade up, but I'm booked for a graduation party that day. It's like, mm. I can't oh, do wow. it all, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So I have you know, a follow up question to that's that. That's a good problem so, to have. <laughs> yeah. yeah it is. Anytime you're in business and you, you, you starting to get, you know, you got to start looking at your schedules to see if you're double booked. That's a great problem to have. <laughs> and so my next, my follow up question to that is how do you keep yourself organized with as busy as you are? What what are your day to day yeah, well, organized? In fact, this past day? week, yeah, this past week, my wife went and get another calendar, and we just started putting everything down on dates, everything that even what we quoted, at least we know we well, you know we quoted on what dates and because uh, yeah, there was like I double booked June eighth, I double booked, but I'm still gonna make it happen. I have a graduation party, and then I have the Rice Research Station in Crowley needs a. a a lunch for 130 people so <clears throat> i'll have to get hire some help and i'm a, you know i'm double booked that day you know um but i'm gonna make it happen i'm gonna yeah. take care of both of them because <laughs> the graduation part is gonna be easy it's it's just finger foods um yeah. so it's not like a, i have to prepare a bunch of meals they just want you know chicken nuggets and meat pies and stuff like that so <laughs> that's gonna be a good thing but yeah so getting organized i had my wife made me go we had to get a a calendar to start putting stuff down so we didn't double book us yeah nice that yeah. yep that's, that's definitely a good problem to have and yeah then, absolutely i'm glad i'm i'm glad you're busy <laughs> absolutely yeah. absolutely I'm glad, I'm glad you're busy friday, friday i did a, a golf tournament for gallo mechanical hiring to go do cater a golf tournament saturday i did a retirement party last night i did lafayette high's award banquet tomorrow i'm cooking at um uh, Blue Line Machine Shop lunch. I mean, it just it just keeps coming, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we've been blessed. That's for sure. You know, yeah. we appreciate the support, and you know, especially the invite tonight to be on the podcast. We really, we really appreciate. Oh, yeah. It. yeah. Well, we want to highlight. We want to highlight you, man, because you know, unfortunately, I haven't gotten to try a plate lunch yet. But Brandon showed a <laughs> yeah. video that that fresh sausage gravy, and I was like, man, that. That looked like home right there. It made right. me miss we, my Louisiana we real bad. Was, was jealous as hell. I, like, man. I, I saw your post on Facebook. I immediately sent it to Barbecue Brand. I'm like, bro, you got to go. Yeah. Yeah, oh. hey, I, yeah, I, I was serving some people. And I looked over at them people's shoulders and I said, <laughs> oh, look at my boy walking up over here. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. I had yeah, to, it was I had it, my mom. Yeah, my mom used to cook that all the time. Fresh sausage and gravy. I mean, she used to cook that. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that was off. And then we'd have, you know, have with rice, and then sometimes with a side of white beans. Man, that was just, that was just. Mm. The best. Yeah, I can that's that's that one of my favorites. Is, is, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all asking me all these on. questions. I, I'll ask y'all a question. What, what is each one of y'all? What are y'all favorite dishes? Oh man, we talking KCP Cajun go. food or what? Meatball stew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cooking that tomorrow. <laughs> Man. Man. <laughs> Cooking that tomorrow. Yep. Barbecue brand new. I was going to say that. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. I guess <laughs> I'll go next. All right. So yeah, go next. Is, um, man, it's, it's a toss up for me. It's a toss up between meatball stew and that fresh sausage and gravy <laughs> and rice because. I just, I grew up the same way. My sister would make that. It was a cheat meal. My sister would make that every, almost every Sunday. I'd wake up and two things I would smell. I would smell them making chitlins, which I didn't want no part of. And then <laughs> she was always making for the kids. She made that, that fresh sausage and gravy. And I, man, I was hitting that. So nice. it's a, it's a toss up between Can't go those. wrong. Yeah. yeah. Can't. Mm -hmm. So much so that I actually had to make some tonight. I got a pot right now that I just turned off. <laughs> from from <laughs> even yours, I had to make some myself. Yeah. The kids just yeah. finished yeah. on that. 
They just mangeed yeah. it. I like it. So I'm going to give me a plate in a little while. I know it's late, but I'm going to give me something in a little while. I got to. Yeah, I like it. Uh huh. All right, Brandon D. I would have to say for me, my favorite, one of my favorite things was when, uh, as like as like a catfish or a garfish cuvion. Like that's mm. that's one of my favorite things. My mom would cook that. She cooked that on Good Friday. We'd have catfish cuvion. We'd have like uh you know either corn makshu or we'd have fe- peas and then we'd have potato salad and then we'd have like fried fish and fried shrimp on Good Friday. I and mean, that's one of my favorite yeah. favorite meals that we cook. That's hard love. to eat too. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, it, it is, and and when it's done right, it's it, it is it is just so so delicious. Yeah. Yep. I um I do a pretty good one too, man. That's a um oh uh, <laughs> that fish who we own. Lord have mercy. Yeah, oh, man. There's some. My grandfather. My grandfather also did a, an excellent uh, catfish cuvee on then. I my mom's was really good too, but I have to say my grandfather had the edge on her uh, on her just a little bit. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I, I have to put like a little star next to mine. <coughs> I, ha- I have to bring this up because I'm pretty sure, Shane, you will understand this. There is nothing better than fresh fried zucchini and eggplant from a garden. Look, nothing I got beats two that. plants in my garden right now, or eggplants. And yes. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Oh, man. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they're... Um, you got a restaurant in Lafayette called Move On. If you mm. ever heard of them, been there before. That's right down they got the road for me. Eggplant, oh, yeah. the eggplant fries with the burgers. You can get the eggplant fries. Oh wow! Now why did it's, it's, it's to die for. Shut your mouth. Are yes. you serious? Guess, like, guess what I'm tomorrow. getting this weekend? <laughs> guess what's going on? Move on. Eggplant fries. Wait, wait, That's don't it. go. Don't go tomorrow. Let's go on Friday. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man, that sounds so good. Man, they, they, right. I, I mean, that's that's just like people in Louisiana, man. I mean, they just know how to cook, man. If yeah. if you get something, it's going to be cooked. And I think I think that's yeah. just how we grew up. You know, food just took a long time. Like it didn't. Like when my mom would, I mean, I would wake up in the morning and my mom was cooking ruin. I was like, oh, it's gumbo today. I yeah. said, mm-hmm. I said, we're not eating that till like five o'clock. So. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a sandwich in between then. But <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah, just that love, so, in yep. it, man. It's just yeah, it's, that's it, man. That's it. That's that's all it's about. Yeah, there's certain smells that just take you right back to your childhood. Room. Onions, onions, onions cooking down. Onions mm-hmm. cooking with like like pork or beef or something like that. I mean, yep. that's always smells like home. Absolutely. All right, Shane. So the question is for you now. What is your favorite? You know, well, you know, I'm a big boy, so I'm a professional eater. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. In order, in order, to so the big boys yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. So, in, uh, or, in order to cook well, you have to taste a lot of different things. You got to learn hey, to. Eat. That's right. It's a fact. Yeah. And I, you know, I got that slogan that says "Never trust a skinny cook." You know. Exactly. <laughs> I was about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I'm a big fan of gumbos. You know, I, I love chicken and sausage gumbo. I love, you know, the seafood gumbos. Um, and then, and, and then just, I'm just a rice and gravy guy too. You know, that's, mm-hmm. you know, gumbos and rice and gravy, is, that'd be my top two. You know, uh, seven mm-hmm. steaks in the gravy is probably one of my favorites. Seven, you know, oh, or that's good chuck roast in the gravy. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite mm-hmm. meals to cook. In fact, I just cooked that chuck roast and sausage, fresh sausage in the gravy at that cook off two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, um, congratulations. At one. Oh, yeah, at one. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. On that. congratulations. Chuck Rose and fresh sausage in the gravy. We took first. And we beat A2 Phase. We beat, we beat Shrimp Stew. Everything with that. Man, let me yeah. tell you, that's that's an accomplishment for y'all, for, for y'all out there that don't know about cook offs. When you go out yeah. there and you cook something like that and you beating seafood, you do Yeah, yeah seafood seafood scores something. pretty high in competitions. It yeah. does. Yeah, it was so it was a black a black pot cook off. So it, that means you can cook just about anything, right? Mm-hmm. It's not. It's mm-hmm. oh no no. It was it was. A, I'm sorry. It was a anything over rice cook off. Mm. It's not like a black pot cook off. So anything over rice. So the seafood. You know, when I got there and I saw it, it was cooking shrimp etouffee and shrimp stew, and I was like, oh lord, this is gonna be it's gonna be tough because you're going against seafood. It's it's hard. Right. 
Oh yeah. Man, yeah, that's so seafood scores. Well, I had to put a little pizza. extra love and hug that pot just a little bit longer, you know. Oh, you, you <laughs> yeah. started with your big toe, didn't you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we got lucky. We took first. That no, is yeah. awesome. Congratulations. I know that must Absolutely. have been good. Chuck, okay. Chuck, Chuck roast makes a great gravy, though. It really does. It really does. Yeah. You, okay, if you I know have how to, to I'll cut them up. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll mm. dice them up. Yeah. I'll season them up. And you dust them with a little bit of flour and you put them in an icebox overnight and let that marinate. And then when you go to brown it the next day, that flour is already is melted into that meat. But you talk about make a gravy. Oh. Mm. <laughs> You talk about making That's gravy, a, a thick, right healthy there. gravy. That's a pro that, that, tip right there. <laughs> that, that gravy will stay on top of the rice. It won't go oh. underneath. Yeah. I've said well, this can't. before on the podcast, and I'll say it again. If you made it this far, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's seasoning your meat beforehand and, like, letting it sit in the refrigerator, especially for, like, a gravy is a great tip. That's a, That really helps. That seasoning, just get it just gets into the meat, and you're, you're not – you're not going to get the same effect. If you're putting it in the pot unseasoned and you're just seasoning it, it's not going to be the same. It's got to have that. Got to have it get in there. That's why it's always better the second day. Cause it's yeah, it's true. Thin. You're yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Man, that's, my, that's one of my favorite things in the world, second day gumbo. Oh. Yeah, because the seasoning <laughs> sets in. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, oh. 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, why you exactly. marinate the day before because the seasoning sets in. It makes it that much better. So question, do you make your own fresh sausage? I do. Oh, nice. I I do. I do. Um, uh, in fact, I'm out. I need to make some more. But I do chicken sausage. So I'll mm -hmm. go to the slaughterhouse and I'll order um, a case of chicken, boneless, uh, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And then I'll grind it up. I have a grind. I have a sausage stuffer. And I'll make my own sausage. So if my son or whatever, we kill a deer, we'll we'll do our own deer sausage ourselves. Yeah, nice. most definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fixing to start doing some boudin. See how that you know. I'm gonna oh. develop a little relate a little recipe on some boudin. Well, you know, if you need some taste testers, I Just mean, there's three people. We're available. That, We're available. Hit that, hit that email. Say. Yeah. That phone, well, that I, phone I, I, my deer phone. sausage. I, I, I mix it with chicken too. I don't do I don't do pork. So I do oh, the chicken okay. thighs. And Casey, Casey, Casey's brother does that too, and it turns it comes out really good. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's no, it's really it's, good yeah. with the chicken. Okay, yeah, so and I put a little out, some dice, dice jalapenos in there. You know, <laughs> it's time, good. Time, time out. When so when I came to the food truck, that was that. Hold on, was that your sauce? No, no, I bought that oh. from the slaughterhouse, straight from the slaughterhouse. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, all right. That wasn't mine. That was uh, that was that was Kirk Martin Slaughterhouse in Karen Krog. I said sausage. Oh yeah, okay. off Bo Bobasin Road. I know where that That's is. Right. Oh yeah. That's right. That's where I get all my fresh meat from. It's from from Kirk. Never Shout out to them. The I've been there. That place. <laughs> well, if you ever been to us, there, there's a there, look. There's people like people lose connection where their food comes from. You know, look when you when you slaughter an animal, there's a certain smell, and right. it's yeah. you've been to a slaughterhouse. It's it just smells like yeah. that. Absolutely. You know, but like, yeah. look, you just be you just be respectful of the animal that you that you get that gave his life for your food, and you know it is what it is. I get a lot of meat from Kirk Morton. Okay, yeah, yep. I've got bought stuff from there too before. I went get fifteen pounds of ground meat from him today for the meatball stew tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's such a that's such a great dish, and for people that are not Louisiana meatball. Killing me. <laughs> meatball stew is a uh, is is just meatball is uh, meatballs in a brown gravy. That's that's what it is. You know, maybe with some gravy. Roux, yeah. roux gravy. All right, yeah. brown yeah. roux gravy. It's I'm a th it's sure a it's li a thicker than a gumbo. You know, yep. not not as thin as a gumbo, but thicker than a gumbo. Yeah, you just, you just make a ball with your meatball. You season up your ground meat, make a ball. I I normally fry mine first before. Mm. Oh I yeah, you got you got to get some color on there. Yeah, and then. And then and then, then you make your gravy, your roux, and your onions, and your seasonings, and you drop the meatballs in there, and let that excuse me, just let that marry together. It's, so, not, yeah. it's not, it's not, it's not super quick. Like most Louisiana things, it's not really quick, but it's worth the effort. It's worth oh, it. Absolutely. That's absolutely. what you have to. Yeah. It's like gumbo. You look. You can't look. People. Anybody that tells you, you can make great gumbo in like an hour is just lying to you. It takes just a long time. Just it's just, you it's gotta just, cook that roux. Oh yeah, you, you gotta cook it. You gotta cook. 
Oh. Cooking, cooking, cooking. The longer cooking. That, that root cooks, the better it's going to be. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'll cook a chicken and sausage gumbo. I'll cook that root. We'll cook it. I might cook it a couple of hours. And then yeah. I won't even put the chicken in there. I don't, no. I'll just let it cook. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I'll drop the chicken in there, bring it to a ball for about 10, 15 minutes, turn it off, and let it sit because that, that root, that, that gumbo is still going to cook that chicken. And, um, mm. Oh, That's yeah. the way I do it. You got to cook it. Yeah, cook we, 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 um, I mean, and the bigger, and the, the thing about it is the bigger the gumbo you make, the, the longer it takes. Yep. So making a big gumbo is, is a lot of effort. It takes <clears throat> a long time to cook that gumbo. I cook mine a at little, least. A little tip when you, when you're cooking with roux, once you, uh, you add your water and you want to add your roux to your water, use a whisk. Mm hmm. A whisk. Mm-hmm. And you get break in that in that up. water, and you and it breaks that roux up like that. Versus so what I soup. so what I started doing is taking roux. If I have cold roux or something like that, I take a strainer and I put the the, the roux in the strainer, and then I force it through the strainer with the whisk, and it breaks it up super really? quick. Oh man, it, I, le- I learned this from watching uh, some Jap uh, Japanese video. They're making miso soup, and they had this little strainer. And they were taking their pace and they were pushing it through. And I was like, this is so it doesn't clump up and burn. I was like, that'll work for a roux too. Oh, oh man, you talk about disperses right. it super quick. Yeah. I mean, well, you'll get, you'll get it. You'll get it. will break it up pretty good, but not as yeah. quick as that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, yeah. it you'll shave, you'll shave a good 45 minutes off your cook with that. It, it yeah. really disperses it. So it works yeah, really well. If you don't, that, them clumps just stay oh, out. It takes yeah. You got to keep yeah. stirring it because it'll stick to the bottom and burn and it. Burns, and burns, yeah. And you, it, see them, you see them little black spots floating? I yeah. will get it. Uh, uh. There is, yeah. there's no, there's people, there's no way to salvage burnt roux. It is nope. unsalvageable. No. That's right. The, you start over. It's the most bitter thing you could possibly taste in your life. It, yeah. it, it, it'll it stick with you for hours. You taste it and you're like, you'll still be tasting it and burping it for a long time. Yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. No way. Mm-mm. No, no. All right. So should we ask him the famous question? Do tomatoes belong in gumbo? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Depends on the gumbo. In a roux gu- in a roux gumbo, not not, not in a roux gumbo. absolutely not no. <laughs> so we we oh, so my family we made okra. We, uh, my mom would make okra gumbo, and they used tomatoes to cook okra down to like mm-hmm. stew in okra for a long time. But that's like an ingredient to cook the okra. It's not like a star in the yeah, in yeah. the in the. I dish. do the, I do the same thing when I cook my yeah. okra down. I put. I put some rotel. I put some tomatoes in there and and cook that down. With, oh, with, so with, yeah. to death. I mean, like, yeah, I cook I, it till there's no more slime. I cook that thing oh, down all the way down. Yes. Like it's just that is the only way to do. If you're not frying it, yep. or pickling it, that's the only way to cook it. In my opinion is to yep. is to just smother it and cook it down. That's, break. that's my favorite. My wife's favorite is uh, shrimp and okra gumbo. That's her favorite dish. Oh, that's a good one, man. So mm. I'll grow okra in the, in. in yeah. In the garden, and I'll and I'll smother it down, and we'll have yeah. fresh, fresh okra with shrimp, shrimp and okra gumbo. That's her favorite. That's mm. where tomatoes go in oak and gumbo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Other it doesn't. That, no, no, no. It's, <laughs> I, my 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 thing about it is it doesn't add any. It doesn't add anything to the gumbo. It, no. it, it's not gonna. It's not gonna it, it add lost. anything good. Is when, it gonna make it nasty? No, but it's like, what's no, the point? Yeah. But what's the point? So right. traditional traditional Cajun dishes, tomatoes is not not your base, right? Mm. Now you get towards New Orleans and stuff, you get yeah, it's more Creole. Creole mm-hmm. cooks with a lot of tomatoes. Same yeah. dish, they call it the same dish, you know, etouffees or whatever it is. They just use more tomatoes down that way. Um, right. And I, I think it's not that's a just traditional a... Cajun mm-hmm. dish. And you tomatoes. know. New Orleans being a city, you know, that's also an access thing. You just have access to more things. You know, they have a lot, they use a lot more butter because they just had, they had people that made butter in your city. It's easier to get butter. If you, if you live in the country, you're making it yourself or you don't have it. So, you know, in the city, you can get butter, you can get cream, you can get all these things if you, you know, but if you're in the country, you have to kind of exist off what you have, you know, and if you have hogs, you have lard. So yep. that's why a lot of people use lard back in the day. That's what they had. They, you have ho- you slaughter hog and you render the lard for it. So that's right. Yep, that's right. Absolutely. 
So it's all about it's all about access. What do you, what what did your family have access to? That kind of builds your family traditions because all of us are all of us have come from different families. We all have different family traditions. We share a lot of a lot in common. Like with the okra, my mom and my grandmothers cooked okra to death. That was the only way we had it. They put it with shrimp and we ate it over rice, or they made gumbo with it. And that's one of our, our favorite things they cooked. Yeah, yeah. So not you know somebody would have put tomatoes in that gumbo was, you know, was, I wouldn't not, not eat it. I'd still eat it. You know, um, it's just not something I would do. Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't think it adds anything to the gumbo. I don't think it's going to make it any better with the, the thing about gumbo that people need to focus on is like, you need to focus on the flavors of your gumbo. If you're making chicken and sausage gumbo, you focus on chicken and sausage. Roux is just kind of like your, your, your thing that you build your flavors on top of roux. If you would just put roux in water and make a soup, it would be disgusting. It t- yeah. tastes like anything. And, and, it has to have the meat flavor to go with it to be something. Mm-hmm. And so, on top of that, Brandon, onions. If you yes. don't cook with onions, you yes. know. Mm-hmm. that We yeah. talk about that a Like lot. it's a different flavor if you don't put a, a lot of onions in your gravy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, and it's you, you'll find you'll find it very hard to find the limit on onions because we we make like a dish in Louisiana, <laughs> sticky chicken that's yeah. made with a a crazy amount of onions, and it's yeah. delicious. And it and you don't taste, it doesn't taste like a people think like a raw a, a, a cooked onion is so different from a raw onion. I mean, it's it's completely yeah, different. It's not yes, the same thing at all. And, and and to get back on 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 the gumbo, who was talking about flavors. <clears throat> Nowadays, I call it the lazy Cajun way. Now everybody uses boneless, skinless chicken thighs, right? Or 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 mm-hmm. chicken breasts, boneless, skinless, right? Mm-hmm. It says healthier because there's no skin and stuff. But when you take the bone out, that bone flavor in in the gravy is 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 mm-hmm. where it's at. So you got to substitute with you know with some chicken bouillon or some or chicken stock, so you can at least have that bone. Flavor. If you just put in water and just bone bonus chin, chicken thighs, you, you're not gonna get the full effect. No. You have you have to you yeah, have to absolutely correct. You have to make a good stock. The, the good yeah, the, yeah. the good stock good stock is key to good gumbo. And if you if you don't if you're not using bones to make your stock to make your stock of your gumbo, you're really yeah. missing out. That's oh, what's going to give you all that. That's going to extract all that gelatin out of there, and that's what's going to give you that silky texture and that. A great, uh, the great taste, and that kind of like I don't know, it, it's it adds richness to the dish without really adding a lot of fat. That's the good. That's, that's right. the great part of it. That's so right. if you make a if you make a bone broth or bone stock, that will add richness to your gumbo without really adding a whole lot of fat to it. Yep. Mm-hmm. That and onions. Bone onions. onions. <laughs> yes, that's that's a that's a big mistake I see with people trying to simulate Louisiana food. Is that they use too many bell peppers, yeah. and you have to use more onion than pepper. Onion yeah. is onion is the is the key flavor. Bell Absolutely. pepper and bell pepper and celery are like the additives to that. Yeah, they they complement it, but the onion is the base. The onion is what where it's really at. Absolutely, hundred percent. You know the kids, all the you know, younger kids, and all they don't like onions. They want no onions in their gravy. You know when you put oh, gravy yeah. over their rice, they make sure you don't put onions on them, but. If you was to cook without it, they probably wouldn't eat it because they wouldn't. Nope. They wouldn't like it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Onion, onion. My kids, my kids are the same way. Like I, you know, they they always trying to peek to see what's going in in the pot. Look, all of this going in the pot is is what's making the flavor that you like. So <laughs> right. the, they got that, what's that, going that in the pot. I, I, I bet you, I bet you they smashed that that plate. I just I just made them and they got. Oh, yeah. Buku I don't like onions. Like I don't like onions. onions. I got I got a yeah. new one, a new hashtag for you, barbecue brand. What's going in the pot? Going in your mutt. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, what a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, you know, we we fooled we fooled people with okra gumbo too. How we cook our our okra gumbo, and it's so we cook. We, you know, we smother that okra and then we boil it for so long and we break it down so much. People are like it's like, oh, this is so good. Is 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 this ruined there? I'm like, no, this is okra. They're like, wait, what? I don't eat okra. No, you don't eat bad okra. Right. You have to know how to cook it. Yeah. And it's not something you're gonna learn it from a restaurant. Is down home down home cooks yeah. know how to cook okra 
down yep. you learn how to cook okra from your grandmother, your parents, your dad, your mom. You don't learn 100%. how to cook this in a restaurant. This is a this is a labor of love. My mom would cook oh we actually cook okra in the oven because it's a little bit easier. It's a cheater way to do it because it doesn't burn. But cooking okra over a stove is work. Well, I mean that's work. It takes a long time. Oh, it takes a and it it will burn fast. Oh, it takes a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. That is that is one of the quickest burning things you'll ever see on a pot. So this is a this is a great time to tell everyone listening right now. If you have not seen our part one, part two, and part three of our gumbo series of the podcast, please go back and watch it. Like, yes. subscribe, yes. share, comment, do all of the above. Mm-hmm. Shane, yes. you will you will learn a lot. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Shane, I want to get because we getting a little bit further in the podcast. I want you to talk now about your seasoning because we have not yes. spoken about your seasoning yes. yet. I want you to talk about how this came about and I want you to tell us about it, the flavor profiles, everything. Yeah. Well, you know, I have a seafood ball and um, I had some friends. We did a, a taste test. They had a little catering, not a, just a crawfish ball and catering business years ago. And then, um, we developed their, their, their seasoning with it through, you know, taste testing. And, and I basically took the base of their seasoning, subtracted and added things to my flavor. Um, celery, uh, cut the salt, a little more spices and, uh, and, and came out with my own, my own blend, a, a seafood ball, which, you know, I'm partial to it. I think it's pretty special. You know, I think it's, in, in my book, you know, I'd put it against anybody's seafood ball out there right now. You know, I developed my Cajun seasoning. You know, I was I was a fan of um, the Tony's More Spice. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The, the Tony's More Spice was one of my favorite ones to use. It had less sodium than the regular Tony's, but it had a little more kick and more flavor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what I really liked. So that's how I based it, you know, based my, 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 my seasoning, Cajun seasonings. I wanted a little more spice, but I wanted less sodium. And I wanted flavor, so that's when I added, you know, started adding the celery and and everything else, you know, the garlic, and so I can get the flavor I wanted with that kick. You know, we went through several taste tests before samples before it got it to where I wanted it, and I think it's I think it's spot on for me, you know. So I have it kicked up a little bit, so it's true to his name, the Gaspar's Cajun Heat, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's got some heat to it, but it does. You know, yeah, and that's so why I like you, it. Yeah, and if you if you traditionally using, I'm saying Tony's. If you traditionally using a tablespoon of Tony's, you don't need a half a tablespoon of mine. You get the same heat and still get the same flavor. So you don't take as much seasoning, which that cuts down on sodium and everything else on top of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I got mine down to like I think it was 11 percent sodium. We love it. We love it. My wife puts it on her popcorn. She. She's had some of our coworkers put it on in their chips. I mean, mm. you you name it, they they use it on everything. Oh, it's nice. good. The gas bar seasoning uh, is excellent. I've tasted a lot of Cajun seasonings, and it stands apart. It's not like everybody. It's not like everybody else has got more spice. It's got that celery note in there, so it's distinct. And you know, and you use it on all your all your catering and cooking, right? That's right. Uh, you use, only use your seasoning. That's right. So it's award winning. It right, wins right. competition, so you, go. you got any yeah. questions? Yeah. Excellent seasoning. <laughs> it is really, really good. Yep. Um, you know, quick. You know, like <clears throat> it quickly became one of my favorites. I mean, I like. Well, I appreciate meat. that. You know, I had. I'm, I might have told y'all that already, but you know, I had that executive chef from from Cachada Casino Resort came and ate my mm-hmm. etouffee, and he's like, "Man, like, what you season this with?" I said, "My seafood ball." And my Cajun season, he said, "That's all you seasoned it with." I said, "I had a little bit more garlic powder to it, but I said that's all I used was just my yeah. two seasonings." And mm-hmm. they're now, because you know, Cachada's they're they're interested in maybe purchasing my seasoning for their for the casino. That's excellent. Amazing. That's awesome. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, that's he, he, he ate he ate of- my A two and He says. Shane, I just finished judging the professional division of A two phase. He said, "You don't want this hands down with this A two phase." <laughs> oh man, yeah, crazy! <laughs> I do love a good A two Yeah. Oh, so man. one of the things that I noticed about your seasoning, because I I used it when, when I got some from you, I used it to cook something. Probably was a gravy. 
I've been cooking a lot of gravies lately. I don't know. I've been, uh, <laughs> but, inspired, man. Yeah, I am. I am. But one of the things that I noticed, because when, whenever you taste your seasoning, uh, the Cajun heat, whenever you taste it out of the bottle, that spice hits you. It'll hit you. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it's like, it, but it's, it's kind of deceiving because it, it feels like, oh, man, if I use this, it's going to light me up. But it doesn't. When, whenever mm. you cook with it, it is just it gives the right amount of spice and it mellows out and it just is flavorful in your yeah. dish. That's one of the things that I noticed is that when I use it to cook with, it didn't light me up straight out of the bottle. It's sort of like a cross seafood boil. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you taste seafood boil. It's, oh, yeah. it's really powerful, right? Potent. Yeah, it's very it, potent. It's very potent. But when you use it in the right amount, it, it, it mellows out. And, I, yeah. and that's one of the things that I found out about your seasoning, and I really like that about it. I, I, I appreciate like that. You know, it. you know, I take pride in, mm -hmm. in what I do, you know, and the reason why I probably really started cooking and, and making seasoning is, is I thoroughly enjoy watching people eat my food and loving my food and coming back for seconds. That's that's mm -hmm. more rewarding for me than, than the money I make or the awards I win mm -hmm. is, is the mm -hmm. people that, that enjoy – you know, my, my cooking yeah. and my seasonings, you know, that's, that's what makes me go back and stir that pot a little bit more next time. You know? Yeah. Hey, so, hey. Yeah. He I think it, it's, he said it. yeah, there you go. It's like Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I just, I just aged myself a little bit there. <laughs> no, <it sounds> old. <laughs> but I think that's, that's a good point. When you're tasting seasoning, when you taste seasoning, you have to take it into the, the with the, Keep it in your head that you're tasting it by yourself. You're going to get all those. Everything is going to come up front. There's nothing to blunt it. There's no protein. There's no fat. There's no. There's no anything. Yeah, no. But water when you to cook with no yeah. water to dilute it. But when you cook, when you taste something and something has cayenne in it, when cayenne's cooked, the the heat profile tends to slide towards the back. That's right. And not and not so, at the end and not towards the front. Like I say, a Cajun, a good Cajun Creole meal. If it's too hot on your first bite, they messed up. When you finish eating it, you say, "Man, that had a good bit of spice. I feel a little bit on my on the back of my tongue, but you know what? I'm good." That's that's yeah. Cajun Creole heat. Yeah. The one is just on that back end. It's you know a whole meal of uh, you'll feel the spice, but you won't feel it on the first. If you feel it on the first the first bite, it's too much. You've you messed up. It's that's too much heat. So yeah. you got to be careful with it. But uh. But cayenne always is kind of a back heat. So it's never really like a, the opposite of cayenne, I say, is always like habanero. Habanero like hits you right on the front, just yeah. like that. Yeah. But cayenne is slow, is the slower heat. And that's why, that's, and that's really kind of the Louisiana heat that you want. That's what you want. You Absolutely. respect the cayenne. That's why, I, that's why I call it the Gaspar's Cajun heat, because I wanted a little more heat, you know, in, yeah. in, than, than anybody else. So if, if I put it against anybody else, it's going to have more heat. But you don't mm. need as much seasoning. Yeah, you know that's that's he. Uh, my preference is is slightly spicier. This is perfect for me. Well, I appreciate I appreciate <laughs> yeah. the love. I really do. No, oh, yeah, it's good stuff, man. I mean, it's it's a it's a, it's a great product. It really is, and I think it's y'all coming out. in this Friday. Casey I am. is. Oh. I am. You come and eat crawfish. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 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 I mean, don't tell me what a good time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm boiling crawfish on Saturday, and I I got a pack of that Gaspar's. Uh, if you need some more, let me know. Seafood boil. So if you I'm need some more, let me know. I got plenty. Hit that. Mm, that's good stuff. I, so, I, 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 I like I like how he yeah I like how he adds a little bit of that crawfish boil to his crawfish etouffee too. That's. That's another trick right there. Oh, that, yeah. that, yes. That uh, that those you know those kind of those uh, crawfish boil is not crawfish boil and Cajun season totally different things, right? There's some spices that you put in crawfish boil that just don't exist in the Cajun standard Cajun seasoning, but they really work with crawfish. So if you add a little bit of crawfish boil to your etouffee, it's gonna bump it up just a little bit. Absolutely, it and will. Then, and then if I'm frying shrimp, or if I'm frying fish, or if I'm frying Crawfish. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a pinch of that seafood ball and just dust that over my sea on my fried seafood, and then and just that pops it, pops it. I'm trying. I'm trying that next time. Pops it. Dang. Trying that. I'm that's I'm uh, great I'm taking that idea. That's a good <laughs> yeah. idea. Yeah, that's, so good. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah, Dang. that's a great idea. 
Yep. Yep. So. All right. Oh, there it is. Yes. Back the it up. Back it up. Back, it up. back it up. Back it up. Back it up. All right. Beep, beep, beep. Yep. Yeah. There, there we, we go. go. There we go. What y'all know about that? Uh. Got smart seafood bowl. Some good that, stuff. I'm, mm. I'm proud of it. Oh. There's, there's the Cajun heat. That's it. That's yes. the stuff right there. Yeah. That is Cajun it right heat. there. Cajun and, heat. And you know, I, I've told you this before, Shane, that bottle is, is, it's beautiful. Don't yeah. change it. Keep it. People like to see their seasoning. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it that. Stands, it stands out on the shelf. Everyone uh, has those little cans, which there's nothing wrong with that, but everyone has it. And you can't see through it. I like to see my seasoning. Mm-hmm. If I'm buying something new, I'm going to turn around and see if, if it's available yeah, to in, see. In the clear I bottles. See it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I told you, Shane. My parents tried your seasoning and absolutely loved it. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Instantaneously. Yeah. My mom tried it. She was like, oh, I'll, I like this. Yes. I got <laughs> to. I gotta figure they out how to it. get them in the, in, on the shelves. You know, I don't, I don't have them that on the shelves. I'm just really. Well, you know, uh, selling them, selling them online might be the might be a, a good a good start. Um, you know, I, I think I think that's a shame because you know, the market is with Cajun seasoning so saturated. Yeah, it's flooded. saturated. But I'm telling you, like the the in, in the long run, the quality ones are gonna win out. Yeah, and yep. I mean, Rusty's is fantastic. The Mad seasoning is fantastic. And your seasoning is fantastic, mm. and I think that has that's shifted. It that's definitely all three of those are in my top five. Well, I they appreciate are. that. You know, I have to revise I my list. I didn't think I tried yours. I didn't try yours before I made my top five, no. but yours is slid into the top five. And my top, yep. like I say, is my top five. My when I think a top five list, that is something I would use absolutely without hesitation. It does, you know, they're in order, but I would happily use any of those seasonings to make mm-hmm. anything. So some people told me to get with a distributor, but you know that you don't make as much, you know, yeah. when, mm. you, when you start getting with distributors. So I just just been selling them out of my my food trailer and That's different right. events yeah. and cook offs and stuff. I just put them out and sell a few, and hopefully gets the word out enough. You know, yeah, let's get yeah. let's get this yeah. hyped up. Yeah, yeah, always, right. Always, I appreciate I appreciate the, all the support. You. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Always have. Ha- always have this on hand with you at every event you go to, whether you cater. Oh yes, to I have cases in my truck. Wherever I'm at in my truck, you. I have seasoning with me. Yep. Yeah, that's a great move. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, sure. I have a question for you though. So this yeah. is a this is a question that um that that floats around the barbecue community a lot. Um, but I want to ask you this. What is, because you do catering, you do competitions, you do a lot of different things. What is the if the one tool that you use or the one thing that you use besides your seasoning, obviously, that you feel like you cannot go without? Got to be my cast iron pots. That's the difference maker. <laughs> I, I'm a fanatic about That's my it. pots, man. I, I mean, I just love my cast iron pots. You know, I have a 15 gallon, I have a a five gallon, I have a 30 gallon. You know, and y'all saw my big 70 gallon that I have. That's impressive. Yeah, you know, um, and like I said, I was telling y'all earlier, I just restored another 15 gallon today. You know, nice. Um, restored wow. that. That's like when I see pots on. Facebook or marketplace, people want to sell. Like I want to go to the savings and empty it out and go buy every black pot they got. You know, <laughs> but yeah, I let, couldn't let me, do without my black pots. <laughs> let me let me tell you something. That's for sure. Cast iron. That's it. Let me tell you about that seventy gallon pot. So I have a I have a thirty gallon pot in my garage, and I'm not a small person. I'm about six one two eighty. Okay, I can't pick up my thirty gallon pot by myself. That seventy gallon pot makes my thirty gallon pot look like a toddler. This thing is massive. I don't know how many yeah. people you can cook for with that thing, but it it's a lot. Six hundred. I can cook a jambalaya for six hundred people <laughs> one time. Wow, man! Jesus. I wouldn't even know, it. man. Like, yeah, that is that is impressive. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell y'all right now, if y'all don't know, to cook jambalaya for six hundred people, to cook jambalaya in that quantity. That is no easy task to get that right. No, no rookie can do it. 
No, it is not. It is not for the. It is, it is not for the faint of heart. That I got one coming up next month for the rice research station. It's four hundred. I got to cook a jambalaya for four hundred. I'm gonna use that pot, and it won't be full. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Right. How many pounds? How, wait, how many pounds? <laughs> we have questions. <laughs> how many pounds of meat for that? So, my meat to ratio with my rice is um. So I'll I'll do um, six people per pound of rice, and I'll go anywhere from mm. one point seven five to two pounds per meat per pound of rice. Okay. Wow. On the ratio. Mm. That is a lot of meat. Yeah. <laughs> That's wow. a lot of meat. Yeah, I did a, I did well, a, that... I did one the other day for three hundred, and I had fifty pounds of rice. Wow. <laughs> no cups measured here, guys. There's no cups of rice. It's just in pounds. Just That's in right. pounds. <clears throat> so it, just a, just in fact, two cups of rice is one pound. Wow. wow. Two cups of rice That's is uncooked. one pound. So that is crazy. Wow. wow. That is yeah. That's wild. <laughs> that this is this is this look. I'm gonna tell you like that. When you cook in that, that much down. jambalaya. Yeah, you cook in that much jambalaya, guys. That is a that takes a that is not easy. That takes a That's lot science. of. A yes. lot of Great skill. Science. It's a lot of skill, a lot of experience. It's not yeah, a so some of you not something. Some of those guys out there that that are cooking their rice on the side and add it to that jambalaya, which look, it's good, it's all right, you know, but it's not the traditional way of cooking no. a jambalaya, and you don't get the flavor exactly. in your rice like if you don't cook it inside. And now they're using their paw ball rice and this and all that. Oh, that's rice. cheating! Cheating! It's cheating! Cheating! Hundred cheating. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Cheating, no. I we, think we that's a controversial this. subject. Completely agree. <laughs> Man, I, I was at a, uh, I was at a, a, a skeet shooting tournament when I worked for Cameron, and they had some, they had some people came and say there were some Cajun, some Cajun cooks, and they made, uh, they made some jambalaya, and ooh boy, it was, it was bad. It was like some <laughs> yeah, the shrimp. Yeah, oh yeah, man, parboiled rice, oh, some yeah, shrimp. Yeah. I was like. I'm I'm picking through this. And I'm like, man, there's there's no like onions in here. There are no peppers. I can't see any. It's unseasoned and like this. It's like some rehyd. Tasted like some rehydrated shrimp. You know that shrimp had that kind of dry yeah. funkiness to it. I was like, some little I, was like, this, I, like, this is not I like a sticky sticky jambalaya. I like a moist sticky yes. jambalaya. Yeah, like, me you too. Take a scoop. You gotta shake it to get the rice off the. the, the <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Y'all heard that? Like, that's, kinda, how you, kinda, kinda, that's how you cook jambalaya. <laughs> Listen yeah, to that yeah. Man and right the here. secret to that is don't use long grain rice. Use medium grain. That's More right. Starch, yeah. Boom. That's, That's right. The medium right. grain, you will have a question. moist, sticky jambalaya. If you use that long grain, you're gonna have to have your running shoes because you're gonna chase that rice all day long. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the point of the dish. So the, the medium, the medium grain rice just has more starch, and that starch is what you cook out, and that starch is what makes it stick. Yep, absolutely. It's just, just like that. I mean, it's like the, the medium grain rice makes a better jambalaya. 100%. I like my jambalaya, like like Shane said, I like it a little sticky. You know, when you when you scoop it, you look look. If there's not some leftover on the spoon after you put it on your plate, you, you <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got to stick to it. That's right. And all these people, they say, oh, they, they're using the long grains and all this stuff, but they all oh, they want it moist, so they add, they adding uh, um, cream of mushroom and everything else to the oh. jambalaya. Is like that's just what, what they know what they're doing. I'm sure it's good. What's but, her? Yeah. Time out. If you add, look, look, you're not, you're not, you're not doing anything, people. You adding cream of mushroom soup. You adding starch. So yeah. why? Yeah. This yeah. is. <laughs> You're avoiding, a, you're, you're thinking you're avoiding the problem and then you're just reintroducing the same, you're reintroducing yeah. the same thing you're trying to avoid. Yeah. Oh, I like the long, it did this nonsense, man. Like, well, I'm not hating on cream of mushroom soup. It has its place. Oh, yeah, but absolutely. not in jambalaya. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. not there. I never, I have never heard of that use in jambalaya before. Oh, people, oh. people use it. Trust me. A lot of people it, it gets you. use wow. that in their jambalaya. A lot of people. And they're, wow. they're saying is they want Here's where the controversy most. starts. <laughs> yes. I know. A lot of people Never use it in the, A lot of people use it in the AT phase too, which I don't really I, have a problem with. I've heard of that. That's how my, I mean, that's how my parents did it. <coughs> it was quick quick it's and quick. Two ways it's, quick. Quick. it's the lazy cage way, which is the the um mm -hmm. the cream of mushroom. Cream of mushroom. Root. So um mm -hmm. but hey I like that golden 
I prefer the, the, the one with the cream mushroom, my flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The two face. Yeah, that's that's it's every, not every, bad. It's not bad. There's nothing wrong it's with not. it. There's nothing it's, wrong with it, people. It's no, just not at it's all. just yeah. it's just there's not, not the traditional way to do it. They, right. Now that golden cream of mushroom soup works pretty good too. I've, yeah, I've yeah that's that. what my parents use. Yeah, golden yeah. cream of mushroom. <laughs> it's nothing wrong with it, guys. Like there's nobody's gonna those 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 soups are they have mushrooms in it. They're they're packed with MSG natural occurring MSG because they have mushrooms. And they have a good flavor, and they 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 have a lot of they have a lot of seasoning to it, so it gives your food a good flavor. Yep. nothing wrong with it. I'm not. I'm well, not. Don't put it in the jambalaya. No, no, no. <laughs> no this is, please, yep. that's not. That's a look. Jump jambalaya. Jambalaya is a jambalaya. What is it fundamentally about? It is about rice and meat. Yeah, and that's that. That's it. Rice, meat, onions. And look, guys, there's there's not a whole lot. That's the focus of this is rice and meat. They try to do too much with it. They try to put right. It's they putting chicken and pork and this and shrimp and this. Like they they try to do too much with it. Just keep it as traditional as it can be: pork, and sausage, and rice. And you're good. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. it. Yeah, you're good. I've beaten. No I've same. been in uh, several of them. I've won, you know, a couple of jambalaya cookoffs and. And I'm just as plain and as original as I can as I can be, and I and I've yeah. won a few of them, not doing too yeah. much. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's like doing you you, too much. you don't need to combine chicken, pork, shrimp, and yeah. sausage, right? Yeah. D shrimp, and look, seafood jambalaya is good. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, like, seafood jambalaya is good too. Shrimp and sausage jambalaya is delicious. Really is. But keep it to just keep it to just that. There's yeah. no reason to add chicken to that. You know, it, you're not you're not adding anything. I like the combination of shrimp and sausage. That's one of my favorite combinations. I don't think mm -hmm. the shrimp the shrimp and sausage don't fight too much, but shrimp and chicken are fighting each other in yeah. the dish. It's just not. It's just I, no I, purpose. I do, a, too many. I do a shrimp and crab bisque, and I add tasso to it. That's good. Smoked meat. Smoked meat yeah. works with seafood, though. Mm -hmm. Smoke yeah, smoked meats work with seafood, but but when you're talking about Seems fresh meats and seafood, right yeah. I like I like I like shrimp and crab bisque. Yes, indeed. Yes, Lord. <laughs> mm. I'll, I'll have to give Ooh, a, okay, a cooking on. lesson, hold a cooking lesson on how to do a, a, a sticky jambalaya. Man, look so when you make when to, you make one, we can you. record you. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do a video. So I was I was actually about to ask you. We we pretty much covered it. If you need to make a jambalaya, we pretty much covered what you need to do in order to do it. What's mm -hmm. what's your like liquid to rice ratio? Two to one. That's where mm -hmm. I'm at too. Two to one. So give you that, I, and I tell people you that, that they're trying rice. to learn how to cook a jambalaya with rice in, in there. I said, if you can cook rice on the stove, you can cook a jambalaya. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. If you don't use your rice pot, you use rice on the stove. You know, um, you bring your water up to a ball. When the water catches up to your rice, where there's no more, you don't see no more liquid on top of your rice. Your rice is caught up to it. You turn it on low and you cover it and you walk away. And that's cooked on the stove. Do the same thing with my jambalaya. When I when I add my rice to it, I bring it up to a ball. When my rice catches up to my water, then it's a two-to-one ratio. But when it catches up to my water and I don't have hardly more liquid, I turn it on low, cover it, and every 10 minutes I want to go flip it so make sure it's not burning at the bottom sticking. And and then mm -hmm. after about 10 minutes, you turn that off and let it just leave it covered. And that's done. It won't miss yeah, every works. time. That rice, you oh, won't God. have no crunch in that rice. Oh, oh man! Nobody That's... want that. Good. I can't tell you how many uh, how many catered events have y'all been to, and y'all had crunchy jambalaya. I mean, me one to too many. Yeah, it happens. Two, one is too many. Yeah, look, it's, look, the, look. it's the worst thing you can like. It's it's bad. It's like. Crunchy rice is Look. like burnt popcorn to me. I can't stand oh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. That's Make me want exactly. to grind you didn't my teeth. Bad with me. Mm. Oh, Look, it, it, it's it's guys, look. There's like, with this stuff, like, there's no shortcuts to this. You have to put the time in. You have to, if you're making jambalaya, you have to cook your meat. You have to brown your onions. You have to get everything to that state you want. Yeah. That's where that deep flavor comes in. That's the thing about, about Cajun food, Creole food, is how savory it is. And a lot of people are just shocked by that. 
yeah. uh, uh, like like Cajun jambalaya is super super savory. I mean, like Cajun uh, jambalaya and, and and like chicken and sausage gumbo are just like some of the most savory foods you can eat. They don't have a whole lot going on with like different flavors, sweet or anything like that. It's just straight down the savory scale. It's no, mm -hmm. there's no sweetness or anything. It's all really just savory flavors, meat and bitter, smoke and salt and peppers and yep. onions. That's the onions, the only like sweet thing to elevate it. And, but it is a super, super savory dish. And people are kind of shocked how savory, that's why they like it. That's why yeah. people try the food. You know, like, I get more requests now for pasta lye versus jambalaya. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's controversial. Yeah, that's I, awesome. I'm not I'm not a big pasta lye fan, but, I mean, I, yeah. I, I've never had one that impressed me. Maybe maybe yeah. other people's will, but mine. Most well, of I'll have to cook you one because I, I use feta chili. Yeah, I was about to say, well, you know, I if you want to give us some examples. Okay, yeah. I use feta chili noodles of mine. Okay, yeah. feta oh, feta cheesy noodles of mine. Um, you see, like, the, the, the thing is, overcooking that pasta is, is the, the danger of that, I feel. If you overcook pasta, I don't like overcooked pasta at all. And it and then my ratio is 0.33 per pound of noodles. Hmm. 0.33 fluid water. This is how you know them. To every pound of noodles. Wow. And then this and is how you know this guy knows what he's doing because he has the <laughs> measurements. Dude, there's yeah. this, look when you <laughs> when you this off right. when you he top of his he ain't looking at a book. <laughs> when you look, I'm telling you guys, when you <laughs> are cooking. Shit. When you are cooking in that quantity and you have you have money on the line and people are going to be upset if you mess it up, that stuff has to be precise. You cannot Absolutely. guesstimate with this stuff. That's this right. is not this is not me cooking at my house. I'm just going to throw this in here. There has to be a plan. There's there's a very low margin for error with things like that, and yeah. you have to know what you're doing. Well, and your as, reputation as, as, depends on it. Exactly, like consistency. It. My depends on it, you know. And if it's absolutely, if I miss it, I mean, y'all, y'all been, yeah, y'all been to that restaurant, you know, when they slip in quality, and you're like, oh, it's over. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and oh, it's it's heartbreaking sometimes. Yep, and I'm trying nobody, to get over on me and I, it ain't working. <laughs> right. Yeah. And no one is a better, bigger critic. Than Cajun people. Oh man! On no food. one will yeah. will criticize your yeah. food more than Cajun. That's right. That's um, why we here talking. Yeah, that's right. Man, <laughs> look, look, that's right. look, it will take you decades to live down a bad cook. If you turn in like, oh man, they made something bad. It will take you a long time to live that down. You will be oh, yeah. the person that made bad stuff forever. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're. Oh, you remember that boy that made that that a two fate? Oh, that was bad. This boy yeah. can't cook. Yeah. Him, he couldn't even cook the rice. It was crunchy. <laughs> crunchy rice. <laughs> oh, man, that ruins jumbo. Crunchy rice ball. Yeah. Rice ball. Yeah. Man. <laughs> you see, that's why we don't just cook to cook down here. That's why our food is better because we don't just cook to cook down here. We cooking with our heart. We cooking with our. Right. our that's what I said earlier, man. You gotta hug our that pot. Existence. Bro. Gotta grab oh, yeah. that pot and hug it, man. You know? Oh, yeah. You you have yeah. to love the process. Yeah. You have to love the process. The whole thing, man. Like, I mean, like, there's like when, you know, like, like I just did a crawfish boil last thing. The whole ritual of it, me getting all my stuff out, me cleaning my pots, getting my stand ready, get, go and get my propane tank. I tell you, let me tell you something, a happy feeling of somebody from Louisiana. The weight of a full propane tank <laughs> gives a certain amount of satisfaction to my soul that I cannot explain. I said, oh, that one's full. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Man. Getting you all my stuff, right. <laughs> getting that full, picking up that full propane tank. I mean, like a, a light one makes me nervous. Like, ooh, oh, do yeah. I have more propane? That needs but, to be uh, on a t-shirt. <laughs> the weight of a full yeah. propane tank, man, it's just, it just is. A, it, when I'm crawfish, when I'm boiling crawfish, I know, hey, man, that's my, I know I have gas. I know I'm cooking crawfish. But look, the whole ritual setting up, you know, it's a lot of work, you know, doing a crawfish boil. Doing two, we only did two sacks, which is not that bad. That's pretty easy. But the whole setup, the thing, you know, me filling up my pot with water, getting my seasoning right, tasting my water, getting everything how I want it. The whole process of it, you know, me, yeah. you know, boiling the crawfish, timing it, waiting for it, waiting for it to soak, tasting it, saying it's good, putting it in the uh, the the ice chest, keep it hot, you know, and then serving it and eating it, man. I can tell it's you, I didn't know my labor, first. No? 
fear. Exactly. Yeah. You have to love the process. I mean, the mm-hmm. whole thing, me like, you know, I'm cooking food, cooking gumbo, chopping up my vegetables, getting that chopped just the way I want it. Nothing else is going to satisfy me. That chop, if that chop is not right, I'm not going to be happy. You know, everything's got to be right in a row, ready for me to go. That's that's how I like. But the process of it, knowing it takes the time, knowing I have to put all this effort into it, and then finally getting the product exact, tasting exactly what I want, that's the part that I love. You have yep. to love the process. I do. Yes, absolutely. And, and, yeah, you you couldn't do what you do without loving the process. There's no way to there's no yeah. way to do it. And you know, and and mm-hmm. you know, we don't. And that's the process of getting started. But we hadn't talked about the cleanup. No, oh, yeah, no. you gotta like clean it up the too. Clean up, you gotta <laughs> like, man, you know, getting that pot cleaned and and re and after I heat it, after I re it, you know, it's oh, like, yeah. oh man, look how pretty that pot is. Like, I, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only a true cook, only a true cook yeah. can look at a pot and say that. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, right. I tell you what, never ever in my life, at any of my crawfish boils, or my dad's crawfish boils, or anything we did, never did we ever leave a, a dirty crawfish pot, gumbo pot. Yeah, never, never was that left out, man. Look, after gumbo crawfish boils, it's look crawfish boils. It was me, my brother, my dad, my cousins were all helping. When it's cleanup time, all hands on deck. Let's get this over with. Yep. That's the only yep. way to do it. Yep. Yep. 100%. Absolutely. So, yep. all right, guys. Do y'all have any last questions for Mr. Shane? Uh, I think, I we, think we covered everything. To, Shane, tell them how they can find you. So, we've been talking about Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. We've been talking we'll, about your cooking. We tell us, tell, yeah. tell the world everything. how they can find you. Link in the description below. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. uh, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't. I don't have a website just yet, but you know, I got Gaspar's Cajun catering at gmail.com. Um, you know, I do have a Facebook page, Gaspar's Cajun catering Facebook page. You can look me up on there mm-hmm. or, you know, just, mm-hmm. you know, you know, my, my personal page, Shane Gaspar, um, on Facebook, you know, um, that's the only way I'm getting it out right now, you know, um, but you know, reach out to me by email or phone number 337-319-1225. I answer my calls. And if I don't, I'll call you right back. Um, you know, I've been in the gotcha. sales world for a long time. So it's phones, you know, and me, they, you know, they glued to my hip. So I'm always answering always. and responding to, to text messages or, or emails um, from a customer. A customer emailed me today, wanted me to, uh, uh, for a date that I was already booked. And I responded pretty quick, you know, and it's like, they said, "Wow, you you responded really <laughs> fast to this." I like, yeah. you know, but yeah, you can find me um, matters, you know, again, Gaspar's Cajun Cater at, at gmail dot com. Um, you mm-hmm. know, Facebook, or you know, I'm in the Lafayette area, the Lafayette, Louisiana area. So, I got wheels on that trailer. We can go just about anywhere. I went to Kansas last year and bought eight hundred pounds of crawfish with that trailer. Oh, that's, wow. work. Yeah. that's work. That's work. Well, that's work, dude. <laughs> that's it. The most I've ever done, I've done like uh, three, three twenty-five or something like that. That's a lot of work. That is yeah. a lot of work. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah. It's work. Yeah. But <laughs> I enjoy it. Look, well, I, I'm very humbled and, and, and very honored that y'all had me on tonight. Oh, we really prepared. appreciate you coming on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Look. I'm so glad that you reached out to us. Yeah. And, and, you know, we could get in touch with you. And even though I messed up the dates. It's all good. On that. <laughs> It all worked out, right? Yeah. It all worked out. It all worked out. It's all good. It's all good. I'm just. I, I need a calendar keeper like you have now. <laughs> yeah. We might need that. Yeah. yeah. But look, look, guys. I'm gonna just put put it simply. This this dude can cook, man. Straight Absolutely. up. Appreciate that. Absolutely. There's, 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 he can cook, man. And he Straight puts up. in. You know what? You put in the effort and you put in the time. You make a good product. You know, and you get you get consistent results. He can cook. I appreciate so that. if you need a ca- catering event, call Shane Gaspard. Absolutely. Thank it's you. not every day that a plate lunch makes barbecue brand shed a little tear. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was, my, Man. that was my real reaction. I really did want to go get a second plate because I was thinking about what I was going to eat for lunch the next day. I'm like, Man, I want this. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, with that being said, I'm going to do our little end quote of the night. This comes to us from a Roman playwright, Plautus, 
something like that, Plapis. And he okay. says, spice a dish with love, and it pleases every palate. So we mm. want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight, and we want to thank our special guest, Mr. Shane I, Gaspard. Our first guest on the podcast. Our first, very first, our mama. first guest. Wow. Yes. Very yeah. first guest. Nice. So, Thank well, y'all you, doing a good job. Again. Y'all doing a great job oh, of sp- spreading the, the, well, thank you. the knowledge of everything thank that's you. going on around here with the cooking and seasoning and everything. Y'all do a great job. Oh, yeah. Well, we appreciate it. We, we love, appreciate it. We love, uh, you know, all of Louisiana. We love promoting small businesses and everything like that. So we, the more we can help, the better. So We like finding people with the passion for cooking, man. And, and Shane has it. That's That's Absolutely. the thing. When you have a passion for cooking and food... You know, you want to share it. You want to talk about it. And you could see, like, in this conversation, you know, how, how much we enjoy talking to Shane about, about food. And, you know, the guy's got a passion for food. And that's, and that's what we all share. Absolutely. absolutely. Thank you all. And it's food so fire, too. Fire. Exactly. Fire, Bob. Making make, make, make grown men cry. Yeah. In, a, in a truck by themselves. Yeah. But that's the thing, man. You know, it's like. <laughs> You t- you tasted you tasted his his uh, sausage uh, sausage gravy man and it brought you right back to home y'all the traditions we all share and from Louisiana mm-hmm. we all kind of you know we're all from this general area we all kind of cook the same things and you know us sharing these things is that's how we connect to other people absolutely yep that's right absolutely but- so all right until next time you guys you keep stirring that pot all right guys y'all have a good night thank y'all. <laughs> <laughs>